I tweaked the UI of LinkedIn. I added this Crunchbase button. So whenever I'm in a company page of LinkedIn, I can just click this. It will do a Crunchbase search based on the organizations I am in on LinkedIn. I used a very nice tool called Pixiebricks and this will make your jaw drop. So watch the video. I'm paid to deliver education to Pixiebricks and this is how you get started. Let's install Pixiebricks. Make sure you have a Google account, which is free by the way, and then click either sign up with Google or start up for free up here in the right corner. Then I click connect with Google and you can see my Google account appears. I just click here. There you go, you have created a Pixiebricks account. We also need to install the Chrome browser extension for Pixiebricks. So click the purple button here in step two. That will open up Chrome Web Store and we can add the Pixiebricks extension to our browser. Click the add to Chrome over here. Click add extension. Wait around 20 seconds, maybe 30. And your Chrome extension will install and we can start creating our own Pixiebricks flows. We have now installed the Pixiebricks browser extension. Just click the open browser extension here and you can see if we have any active bricks. There's also a quick start guide, a two minute tour and everything, but we will build our own from the very beginning. So go to your LinkedIn page. I recommend you to search uh, out Tesla and have their company page open because we will add a nice custom made button right here where we will uh, no matter what company uh, page we are on LinkedIn we will do a crunch base lookup based on the name of the company it's very very easy let's open up the page editor to open up the developer tools in Google Chrome you can press F12 or control shift I I'll press F12 which will open up my developer tools if your developer tools for some reason shows up, up over here to the right, it will look like this. Let me show you. You want to have it in the bottom because it's designed for that. You can see it's very, very wide. Otherwise, you have to scroll and do all sorts of other suboptimal things. To get it dark to the bottom, click the three dots here and then choose this one here that will appear dark to the bottom. There you go. You now have your developer tools right here and we will click the pixie bricks. You need to grant Pixiebricks access to the page. Simply click Grant Permanent Access, then click Allow. There you go, we can start building our Pixiebricks flow. We will add a button as mentioned. We will have a button right here and we will have it look like this More button, so it will not kill our eyes. To do so, click the Add here, click button. Now we can choose all the elements here in the browser UI. You can see it, that they turns purple. Because we want to copy this button here, we want to copy it in design. We hover our mouse over the more, the button appears. You can see the purple name. Left click with your mouse and we have now added the button. It's that easy. We will customize this button so it will look nice. Um, you can see it looks exactly like the more, that's fine, but we will give it another name than action. We want it to be named Crunchbase because we will do the lookup here. So here, that's just for the lookup for Tesla, it will look like this. And um, to do so, uh, make sure you have the button here marked, it will be per default. Then go to caption, delete the action, and then type in Crunchbase like this. And if we scroll a little bit down, we don't have to do something because Pixie Bricks has automatically created the selector for us. You can see it here. That is the CSS jQuery selector. That's fine. We will not do anything more in this step. Now what we want to happen is that when we click this Crunchbase button, it will take the name from up here and then do the Crunchbase lookup. So we will add another brick. In this button, just below it, you will see a plus. That is add a brick. Click that. And then we will search for component reader. There you go. Then we'll click add brick. What we want to take a look at. If there's no framework specified detected here, that's fine. We will just choose it manually, the Ember JS here. Then we will choose what data do we want to read. We want to read the data here. So we will just click the arrow here and then we can choose it. Make sure that you select the whole one here, that's the H1 instead of just uh, the span. So click here. 
that is the selector. It's, it's automatically created. And you could, of course, also have written it yourself if you know a little bit of jQuery. So now we will, this will save it into a variable and to see what kind of data that we want out, uh, that we, uh, we can click the preview here and then we can search for Tesla and scroll a little bit down, click the play button here, click another play button and we will take the universal name because we can use this universal name in Crunchbase. So if I click here, it will copy the property to my clipboard. Let me open up Notepad just to see you, to show you how it looks. It will look like this and we will let it stay here because we might need it in a few seconds. Because now we have saved this Tesla up here. It could have been Apple or Netflix, but we saved this name and we want to open a new tab with Crunchbase and do the lookup based on whatever company page we are on on LinkedIn. So then I click the plus. Now I'll find the open a tab here. I'll take this one and then I click add brick. So we want to open up a URL. If it was Tesla, if we know that all the time it was Tesla, we can just uh, paste in this one here, but we don't know. So this one here is quite static. All Crunchbase uh, company pages will look like this. So we can copy this, control C, go back to our flow and paste it in here. Now we will use the variable from up here from the component reader to make, to make two curly brackets like this and then take the property that we pasted in our notepad. So I'll copy this one back, paste it in here. Remember to end with two curly brackets like this. There you go, you have created your first Pixiebricks flow and let's verify that it actually worked. So what I will do here, I'll click save. It will save the extension, now we can use it. I will um, make sure that I close down the cr crunch base up here so we can actually see it work. We will not use the two pixie bricks at all. And let's try to do the crunch base lookup. So if I click here, wait a few minutes, there you go, Tesla opens up. But uh, that was quite easy. Let's see if we can also get it to work with all the other companies. For example, like we mentioned, Apple. Search for Apple on LinkedIn and then click Apple. There you go, you have a crunch base. That one at least works. Let's click it. That's the Apple crunch base. You can see that we now made a dynamic search possible by using the variable. Let's try the last one, which is Netflix. So I click here. Then I click the Netflix and there's a crunch base once more. Click it. There you go, we have the Netflix. It's that easy to create Pixie Bricks flows. Make sure you do not miss all my coming Pixie Bricks content by clicking the subscribe button in the middle of the screen.